telling you the scriptures, the symbols, everything's pointing to it. Is he physically going to rise from the dead as a 10-foot guy like Frankenstein, formerly decapitated, everything put back together again? Could be. I don't know. I think it's interesting that he's called the beast. I mean, Hitler was a bad guy. Genghis Khan's a bad guy. There's a lot of bad guys in history, but nobody called him a beast. And a particular word in Greek is therion, which is not just like an animal. It's, it's like a werewolf. I mean, it's a strange creature. Uh, or could it be that some world leader out there may become a host for this spirit? The earth is at peace. There are no wars. There is no hunger. Honesty, courtesy, and kindness are practiced by all. The world has never been. one of us. I believe that's talking about the mark of the beast right there, personally. And some interesting things have come up, and I'm going to talk about this more in my Archon Invasion seminar, regarding transplant memory. I've been watching some documentaries on, on research that's being done, a, a documented cases, lots of them, where people have received an organ from an organ donor who is dead. And but what's interesting is they, they put a heart in them or a liver, a kidney, or whatever from somebody else, but they all of a sudden start t being a martial artist and they never had any skills before. They suddenly are a, an amazing piano player and they never played a musical instrument in their life. They are having memories that are not their own. They have dreams and visions that are not from their past. Well, what's going on there? If they took on the gifts, talents, abilities, memories of the person who gave them their tissue, that says to me a soul entered their body. What, did the, what does the scripture say? That the life is where? Life is in the blood. Why do you think the Torah is so specific about blood issues? Don't mess with blood. Make sure the blood's drained before you eat that animal, right? The Torah is really specific about issues of blood. What does it say after Cain killed Abel? His blood cried up from the earth. Huh? It's just blood. What do you mean his blood cried up? From the, cried out from the earth. You know, anybody who's taken a tour through the, the battlefields of the Civil War knows that there's a lot of people there that say those, that place is haunted. That there are spirits all over the place over there. Could it be that there's a spiritual component to DNA? I believe there is. And somebody, Doug Hamp, the author of the book, Corrupting the Image, he kind of clarified it for me. He said, DNA is just information. And if you think of it that way, packets of information can be exchanged, right? What does a virus do? If you give me a thumb drive that has a virus and I put it in my computer, what's it going to do? It's going to rewrite my hard drive. There was an episode of Fringe that just came on like a couple weeks ago, right as I was preparing this presentation. I'm like, oh, I've got to grab a couple of clips from that. Check out, this is a couple of minutes from a scene, uh, a couple of scenes from an episode of Fringe. You see these? The track marks. We think he was injecting himself with whatever that stuff is. What's that? Just here. Huh. It looks like a tattoo. Hey, Walter. Hmm? Can you come here for a sec, take a look at this. Okay, well, if Conrad's not behind this, who is? Perhaps the Sumerians. His tattoo. His cuneiform. I'm not sure of the significance of the symbol, but I'm fairly certain it's Sumerian. Yep, I was right. Here it is. I remember reading it means renewal or rebirth. There's been some rumblings lately about a group out there. A cult, really. As far as I can see, they're just whack jobs. <laughs> they're obsessed with the guided evolution of man. They want to create a new species, a better species. Mutation by design. This should be the last one. No. 
Just think how special you're gonna be. How special we're both gonna be. Like Adam and Eve. Walter, take a look at this. Oh my. The Department of Guided Evolution. This is indeed a great leap forward. Robert Jones is behind this. What's he up to? You mean uh, assuming that uh, creating a flying human porcupine hybrid was not his end goal? Yes, and where is he recruiting these people from? And are there more out there? And who would sign up to become one of these things? We can be born anew. The two of us. Together. We can be children of the new world. Hey guys, listen to this. Each generation of gods is overthrown by its children who become new gods with new tools. Science delivers these tools, and mankind gains dominion over all he surveys. What kind of science? Uh, radical transgenics, hybridization, guided mutation. Most of this is about encoding foreign genomes with retroviral DNA. And these algorithms are pretty advanced. Uh... Quiet, you two. Retroviral DNA. <laughs> I'm watching this episode. I'm like, whoa, man. Something that gets in there and rewrites their hard drive, rewrites their DNA. So could it be that a world leader maybe takes one of the well-preserved, Steve Quell said that the, the general that saw, and the, the military guys that saw the, the body of Gilgamesh said he was in a remarkable state of preservation and their primary goal was to extract the DNA. Could it be that through some kind of infusion, and that's incidentally what I believe the mark of the beast is. Now back in the 80s and 90s, I was thoroughly convinced it was the barcode. <laughs> As you can see, you know, two little lines. I mean, six. See, there's three long lines and six, six, six. I was convinced the barcode. A lot of eschatology teachers were. Then it was the microchip. Could it be that the microchip is instrumental in rewriting your DNA? Maybe. L.A. Marzulli believes so. He's seen people who have, uh, he knows a guy who's personally removed so-called alien implants from people who have been claimed to have been abducted by aliens. And when they put this thing under uh, observation, they look at it, they say it has a massive clock speed, faster than any other computer. And so he asked this, this doctor, what do you think this, this implant's doing? And he just, without missing a beat, said, oh, it's rewriting their DNA. So could that be how it happens? Could be. Could it be a retrovirus? Could be. Could it be some of the actual genetics of Nimrod? Could be. Interesting thing about it is once you take this mark, you can't go back. It's not like a barcode. You can move that out. You can put it on and get rid of it. A tattoo, you can get rid of it. An implant, pull it out. Whatever this thing is permanently changes you such that you are not redeemable after that. You, you can't, it, it's done. And it says that they beg for death and death flees from them in Revelation. They've purchased a counterfeit immortality apart from Christ. That's why they're cast alive into the lake of fire. I believe pop culture is talking about it all the time. You know, but something's going on with this DNA issue and all of this animal-human hybridization and this Gilgamesh thing. We're about to see some pretty scary days ahead, no doubt about it. And people are going to become hosts, just like that says. Your world is now ours. That's what I believe. Begin to understand why the scriptures say we need to come out of Babylon. Right? Revelation talks about that, doesn't it? Here's the thing. You can't fix Babylon with Babylon. You can't fix the matrix with the matrix. Revelation 18. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. You know, this election year is coming up. And everybody's talking about it, and everybody's putting all their effort and all their money and all their resources into some new political candidate. 